Welcome to the Aftermarket Report with Vegas and Jim. Today's date, September 16th, 2019, and Miss Vegas has a small little watch list for us. Yes, and good afternoon, everyone. Hope you had a nice trading day for Monday. Uh, we're definitely going to talk about CVM, USO, RIG, GBR, and KMI. Um, so definitely want to mention, you know, investors today, um, you know, we had obviously we heard about the news about the oil tankers. Um, there was an attack on the Saudi oil facilities over the weekend, and it was enough to obviously dampen investor enthusiasm. Uh, the Dow fell a little more than 150 points, and that's pretty much the, a tame drop, especially when you consider that uh, blue chip averages had gained for the prior eight days. Um, you know, looks like investors are basically holding and buying stocks because of the what they call TINA trade. And TINA stands for there is no alternative, which is apparently a very popular mantra now on Wall Street. Um, so we'll just have to keep an eye and see what's going on with the oil uh, sector. But we did see definitely some pops on oil. And uh, we'll talk about those momentarily. So the first one we'll talk about is CVM, which is... Uh, the company called Salsi Corporation. And, you know, we've talked about this on previous videos. And if you guys remember, this stock was under $2 at one time back in March. And look where we are now. I mean, we're going to head to $10, in my opinion. Um, we went very close to that back in July. Uh, we never really made it there. But here we are again with new 52-week highs on CV. M. They did present at a uh, conference last week and, you know, they're very into technology. They look to develop therapies for unmet medical needs and they have a phase three trial, which is the largest they've ever had. Um, and it's for the head and neck cancer. It's currently, they're enrolled 928 patients and uh, we're hoping to eventually hear news on their phase three trial so jim let's hear about cvm please yippers this is my chart that i'm pulling up right now i'm taking off the level two and these other little tools this is a ttm trend chart and we're going to look at cvm it did have a nice little breakout today right around this area right around this under eight dollars all the way to 940 so let's look at the year's chart this is CVM. I got three different supports on it already drawn up. Actually, it could be four. Bring another one right down here to about six dollars, five ninety-nine. And the resistance we had to break on this year chart today was this resistance area right here, right at eight seventy-five. So that's what we're going to call our first support. I can more or less judge what I'm going to be calling it right here. I'm going to go ahead and put another support level at. Whoop! There we get it. 838. Now I'm going to bring this down to a 20 day. That was a yearly chart with a 237 low and a 940 high. About six months work there. So that's a pretty good 400%, less than 300, more than 300%. Let's bring it to the 20 day. We had a resistance breakout that we had to break here. It was at 875. I could raise that up here just a little bit to 896. So this is how we're going to see it for tomorrow. We did have like an ascending triangle breakout pattern here today, most of the day. And then at the end of the day, it just started running up. Just had a real nice clear run up all the way for the last hour of trading day to 940 from about 868. So your first support is going to be right in here, right around the 896, a little under nine bucks, 875, and then try to keep it and hold it here between the, these two numbers right here of 809 to 838. That's where we want to hold it. If not, I think she will pull back a little bit and then continue this momentum all the way up. And that's CVM. The next one we're going to talk about is USO. Miss Vegas. Hello, Miss Vegas. Oh, hello there. So, um, just wanted to continue along here. I lost connection with you guys. Sorry about that. So, um, USO um, is the United States Oil. And, uh, you know, this is the one, it's an ETF traded security. 
what it does, it really just tracks the daily price movement of the West Texas Intermediate, which is, you guys know, the WTI. Um, it's the light, sweet, crude oil, as if we actually taste and eat it. I mean, I'm really surprised it, that it has that weird name. Anyways, um, just makes you want, want to think how they come up with this information. Um, so you could see that the USO had some fantastic activity today. And uh, we definitely saw a lot of money flowing into the U.S. And um, we were able to trade this actually from an options perspective. We actually took the $13 calls. We paid 45 cents. And very nice later in the day that those went all the way to 83. Uh, it did pull back to about 70 cents. Um, no one's really selling them right now. These don't even expire until October 18. Um, so we have lots of time here. And... Uh, Basically, you know, oil's pretty hot right now. So, Jim, what are your thoughts on the oil? Yeah, with all the turmoil going on, I guess so. But we still are dependent upon ourselves now. We supply our, our own selves with oil. So, it don't hurt us as bad, but it definitely can put a crip in the market. So, we had a nice little breakout today. It did pull back, kind of like a V-shaped pattern Then after hours. I mean, this was pre-market. And then during the day, it bounced up to 13.16 and pulled back to the 9 there on the 20-day. So let's look at the year real fast, USO. Yeah, we still got a little ways to climb. It looks to me like it was kind of below a support area. And I'm kind of thinking that support area probably was right around, kind of hard to say, right around in here maybe. I'd say yearly pivot point of 11.95. So that's going to be our low. If it pulls back to that 1187, 1195, that might be a good little entry. We've got another little support level right here at 1259. We did have the gap up today, which is a pretty good strong one. So this is one we're just going to have to kind of watch the market tomorrow and see which see which way these all go. Things they did have such a big spike today. The oil did. I mean, so anything that had oil in it probably bounced. Even Yuma did today. So we got a low support. Let's bring this up to a 20-day. We can look at a 20-day maybe a little bit better here. I got one more support right here. So this is where our first support is going to be right there at 1276 where that 9 EMA is. The resistance we do need to break is going to be the 13, 1302. That's the resistance that we do have to come up and break, although we did have a 1316 high. So I'm trying to draw in another support level right in here. So this is how we're going to call it out for right now. And if it goes below this 1250, then we have a, a solid support right down here at 1219. And I have a 1225 in here for some reason, but we're going to put that 1219 in here. And I'm going to put that in a red line so I can remember that as a solid support. Get that in there. Okay, so we've got a low, low, low solid support at 1219. Then we've got the, the third support at 1250, 1259, and 1276. Now, there's not much of a spread there between that 1250 and 1259, so I'm going to adjust it up just a little bit to right here at 1263. Then we'll run these numbers for you one more time. We've got low, low support. When I say low, low, that means strong buy at 1219. If it holds that channel, if it does, if it wants to hold this new channel, if not, it can definitely pull back to these lower support levels. The next one's 1250, 1263, and 1276 with a resistance to break of 1302. And the next one is one that I've always wa I've watched for a long time, and that's RIG, R-I-G. Okay, so we're going to talk about rig. As you can see here, um, you know, this is TransOcean. Um, it's an onshore drilling operation. You know, this company has been around since the 1920s. Um, so we can see that rig had some serious um, action here. And, um, you know, today was, I definitely heard it popping on scanners. I saw the tape actually going pretty wild here on rig i mean it opened up in the morning as it was i mean it was as low as 606 
went all the way to uh, 665. I mean, look at the volume in there today, over 50.36 million shares. Now, what's, this is what's interesting, and this is why, like, I got to tell you, like, these options are just, if you get a good setup and they're cheap, it's a good opportunity. But, you know, we spotted Ray, you know, back in August. So I would say about a month ago, because it was August 13th. And we spotted these option calls on rig. They were $6 strike. They were 23 cents, but expires in November. So a lot of people did take these, first of all, because they were cheap. And second of all, because they had the time on their side. And they thought, you know, back in August, um, you know, you have like two, three months holding this potential trade. And the key thing was that the volume block that I pointed out that day was 504,000 contracts. And I was like, what the hell's going on here? So a lot of people did buy and they sold actually in some cases last week for double the price in the 40s. Um, but let me tell you, today, this is an over, this is a dollar ten. So what an amazing 500% gains on this option trade. So Jim, what are your thoughts on the rig chart? I was looking at that profit there. That looked pretty good. Well, we, we yeah. started started running into 2018 trend lines which I thought we were way oversold this this stock shouldn't have been so oversold like this in 2019 so I was kind of surprised to see it go down all the way to 376 and then bounce back up here to the resistance levels that we need to be at which is usually a support of around 651 that's right about where we closed right after hours and that's running right into the 2018 trend lines which we did have a low support back there on that sell-off we had back in December as you can see it frantically sold off all the way from 1477 all the way down to 646 and I got stuck in this one last year as the pullback came because I thought you know this was way too much and way overdone well she bounced up went up to that 200 EMA and then she's pulled back again and then she pulled back for a double bottom not a double bottom but a double dip to 376 and in here in the last month or so she's bounced up and today we had that big you know oil debacle and it ran and closed all the way to 641 so we're going to go ahead and stick with these I'm going to go ahead and put a new little trend line right in here for our next resistance and that looked to me like we hit it already here at 660. So the one after that is going to be up here at 686. And let's pull up the 20 day now. Yep. So we've got pullback support. If this thing decides to pull back any at all, it would be the 583 area right here where we had that last high on the 20 day chart. Be this 583 is going to be your low, low, low support. And that's how I'm looking at these. I'm not going to say they're going to continue on up. And keep this run up because the run was so big today and so huge. This market's run on algorithms, more or less. It just it, it doesn't take numbers or anything like that anymore. But we do have a low support here at 583 with your second support right here at 619. That's what's got a hold at 619. And then you've got your first support areas right here, right around the 639 to 646 area with a resistance to break is going to be adjusted to 664 instead of that 660 all the way to 686 and then we'll take it from there on out tomorrow if it continues on up we can go ahead and break that 686 if not it might pull back to this 583 and that's going to be rigged but we're definitely have had a nice little bounce on this 20 day chart Almost 100 percent from 386 all the way to our lucky number 666 rig. And there's another energy play GBR. Okay, so GBR is new concept energy. This was also popping on the scanners today, um, and obviously it's an energy stock. I mean, we know what GBR does. Um, you know, they're obviously in the energy market. They're producers of oil and gas as well. And uh, they're, you know, very into the drilling and exploration projects and um, very into offshore projects. So you can take a look here today on GBR 
Um, again, low of the day, 195, went all the way to 263. Very strong. Volumes, 2.3 million. So volume's still good, holding up here at 253. And we'll see if there'll be a continuation on this tomorrow. So if you didn't stay traded today, you may want to just keep an eye on it um, and see if there's a potential continuation. Um, I'm not in it, but if I am going to look at it, I'm going to wait for the high of day 263 to break before I take a position. But so far, it looks pretty good. Um, Jim, what are your thoughts on GBR maybe having a continuation? Yeah, I sure wouldn't want to trade it on its earnings, although they did kind of move up from their their last quarter loss that they had from, uh, oh, let me see, your earnings per share was negative three to, which was a negative seven year to date. But the sales, 164K, <laughs> that, that supplies my toilet paper enough for a year. So we got 164K down from 173 from a year ago. So the earnings ain't something I want to take home to mama. And it's definitely lower than it was the year before. So, you know, not much not much in earnings there. So this is going to be a price action play. Now, it did have the initial breakout, what you'd expect out of something like this. When everything else runs, it, all the other sector kind of runs with it. So we did have a high from 153 all the way to two, one, 285. And it did pull back to one new support levels that I had here, 194. And then she went ahead and she's got a new resistance up here. I'd say probably right around the, oh, I'm thinking 269 area, maybe the 275. And we hit that after hours. So this is how I'm going to look at this. This is like a little cup and handle right here. I think it can pull back. We, if we can retrace this 194. You might be able to get in here. That's going to be your low support. You might be able to get in here. Your first one's going to be right around this blue line of 226. I'm about tempted to clear this all up. Let's pull up the yearly chart and look at this real fast. Yeah, see, it's pretty, pretty clustered up in there. I'll probably clear this after I'm done with this session here. But this has got two years of trend lines on it. So let's pull up the 20-day. You can see what happened here. We did have a low of 141 20 days ago. It did hit kind of a high up here right around the, the 184. And then she went ahead today. She did have the breakout pre-market of 285. Pulled back and then almost retraced. And it's really kind of a hard retracement. I would have personally said this thing could go no higher than 230. But it actually did. It closed up. It went here after hours. It hit a high of... 275 so keep gbr on watch let's see how this reacts tomorrow if it pulls back you got a low support of 190 186 to 194 that needs to hold now you might get a small dead cat bounce up on that or retracement bounce back to the 226 area but i don't see this go ahead and moving on up much unless it pulls back pretty hard and you get a retracement bounce and that's going to be gbr that's what you can expect when you have these breakouts, like what happened with a crisis with the oil here. And then last one, or is there, let me see. Yeah, one last one. We're one last one. Load. Yeah, one last one, just Kinder Morgan, just quickly. This is, you know, a, one of the largest energy infrastructure companies in North America. They got 84,000 miles of pipeline, 157 terminals. I mean, they're out in Texas, and they also uh, supply... Uh, pipelines in Canada, both in Alberta and in Vancouver. Um, so definitely, you know, KMI, again, I mean, we got these option calls on here for six cents, okay, six dollars a contract. These went all the way to 20 today. Um, we didn't buy these today. These were bought, I believe it was last week. Um, you know, not everyone sold their calls. People still holding because they like the oil action here. Um, so we and you could see the tape, Jim. I showed you a picture of the tape on yeah. Kinder Morgan. I mean, this is after hours, um, just after four o'clock. I mean, a lot of action happening here in Kinder Morgan in terms of buying. And look at those position sizes. I mean, they're pretty juicy. So I wonder what we'll see tomorrow. Love to see this break twenty-one dollars, but I'd love to hear from you where we're gonna go. Yeah, we're up here at resistance levels, and I'll pull this up. First, I always look at the yearly daily chart. That kind of gives me a 
an idea of what I'm looking at. First thing popped in my mind was the top jumped off this 200 EMA and we had a resistance of almost like a triple top up here but not really but kind of at 2120 when it did have a high of 2150 right up in here 2143 so this is how we're going to probably look at this is probably have to fine tune this when I come in in the morning but we're going to take this to the 20 day right now I'm going to say low support, right? No lower than this, maybe around here, around twenty, twenty dollars, twenty fifteen, somewhere in there, twenty twenty. I got a twenty twenty two support level. That's going to be your third one. Your second one's going to be right here around twenty forty three, with your first one right here at twenty sixty one. The resistance that we need to break is going to be the twenty ninety two, twenty one twenty. And then 2143, and we did have a high right up here pre market at 2194. So she did pull back, and I, I believe in this company, and I do believe that this is like an equilibrium pivot point or resistance level at 2061. That needs to hold, so that's going to be our first support. And the resistance that we need to break is going to be that 2143, and that's KMI, and that does it for the market report. And Miss Vegas, anything else you'd like to say? No, I just want to say tomorrow, a reminder, the FOMC meetings do start. And I'm sure we'll get a lot of updates throughout the day on what's happening with FOMC. We'll see Wednesday if they're going to give any kind of announcement on a potential rate cut. And I guess uh, we'll see if that's going to happen. And I guess we'll wait like everyone else. No choice. We'll sit back and wait. So uh, good luck with your trading tomorrow. Feel free to come by the chat. Uh, follow us on Twitter, Stock Twit, and engage with us. And uh, come on by anytime. Have a great night, everyone. Thank you for following, subscribing, liking, and we'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Have a great night. Yes, and this is our little tweet bird over here. If you want to hit that, follow us on our I Love Stocks channel on Twitter, and we also have located on here these other icons, Stock Twits, and. Pinterest, Facebook, YouTube, and then if you ever wanted to email us. So this is I Love Stocks Aftermarket Report, September 16th, 2019. And we wish everybody a great trading week, and we love stocks.